Good morning. It's a great privilege to stand here amongst this distinguished audience, and uh, we are very proud of our connection with the Clean Revolution. At Philips, we are committed to make our communities healthier, more, vi more vibrant, and sustainable through meaningful innovations. We are proud to be part of a clean revolution, and our goal is to improve the lives of 3 billion people annually by 2025. Our company was amongst the first group of companies to be transparent about our sustainability goals and one of a few to be audited independently. Today, well over 30% of our global sales come from green products, and we are on track to improve the efficiency of our product portfolio by 50% by the year 2015. We are equally committed to the sustainability of our own facilities. The most recent example is the installation of a wind turbine at one of our largest manufacturing facilities in Fall River, Massachusetts. These two megawatt turbines produces 70% of energy requirements for that facility. I'm very proud that for the second year in a row, Philips was named a super sector leader in Dow Jones Sustainability Index. But you know, here today, energy efficiency is really a crucial element of the sustainability equation. So the key question for us is how can companies and governments work together to meet the current economic challenges while making strides in sustainability? We believe the time is right for the public and private sectors to join forces in stimulating investments in new technologies, fostering innovations, but more importantly, help accelerate the market penetration of these new green technologies. An example of public-private partnership in fostering innovation was the U.S. Department of Energy's recent L Prize challenge for developing an LED equivalent for a 60-watt incandescent that uses less than 10 watts of electricity, a challenge that Philips embraced and won the prize. Just imagine, by changing only half of the lights in the United States alone to this energy efficient light, would save $50 billion annually. That's equivalent output of 198 medium-sized generating stations. The public-private partnership is even more paramount at the local level. Cities already account for 70% of all energy consumption. And as cities expand, there will be more demand for energy supply. But the truth is that more than 65% of world's lighting is based on old technologies. In US alone, 80% of all buildings were built prior to 1980s, and most still use their original lighting systems. With 20% of all electricity consumption for lighting, the big opportunity, the real and immediate opportunity, is retrofitting the existing buildings. Mayor Bloomberg has been a national leader in this regard by establishing far-reaching building efficiency policy for New York City to achieve a 30% reduction of greenhouse gas emission by 2030 as in compared to the 2005 levels. And a prime example of the manifestation of that policy is the Ernst & Young upgrading the lighting on their 32 floors of their corporate offices in New York, saving some $1 million in energy and maintenance costs while reducing CO2 by 2 million pounds annually. Equally important is that governments lead by example making public buildings and roadways more energy efficient. It is really a triple win. Save energy, reduce emission, and create green jobs. Of course, the innovation in LED lightings are not just limited to energy saving. The city of San Francisco plans to transform Bay Bridge into an LED sculpture at night. A study commissioned by the city found that they will enhance their community 
and generate more than $100 million in tourist revenue as a result of that transformation. That proves that what's good for environment can also be very good for business. Philips is committed to be a partner in innovation and, work, and working together with our stakeholders, we aim to share expertise and co-create innovative solutions that will make a difference to clean revolution. After all, light is fundamental to life. I am very optimistic of the role that the United States will play. Our country has traditionally done that. And to paraphrase another British prime minister who said that America always chooses right, but only after having exhausted all other options. This time, I think we need to be a little bit faster. Thank you very much.